Brian. What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, I actually just spoke to him earlier. He is doing well. He's going to be back Monday. Uh, we're looking forward to having him back on. Uh, let's take a look at what we got going on. Finishing off this uh, kind of crazy pivot of a week. If you listened to my interview with Tim Ord yesterday, he brought up this interesting fact. Now, one of the things that I'm always concerned with, like seeing coming off of lows high, with high volume, is kind of contracting volume on the way back up. Over the past few sessions, while it's still lower, right, than the, while the volume's still lower than the, than the low, um, what Tim Ord was saying, essentially, is that, and you should check out this interview if you haven't, right, it's on our YouTube channel, Tiger Financial News Network, um, go check out that video, and he was saying that after it was about six sessions, right, it has this momentum to continue to go higher, and that's the general sentiment, so he's pretty bullish on that as well. We're trading up currently at 0.22%, uh, the SPY up 0.24% as well, the Russell Futures trading up about 0.33, the NQ's up 0.15, the Composite up 0.26%, and the Dow Futures and the Dow Jones itself roughly up about 0.36% as it is. Gold had a pretty solid day on some decent volume as well so far, trading uh, at its high right now of 2500 and uh, 42, very good for that. Silver trading up 1.91% at $28.96 on the contract. And then copper trading at 415. Now, crude is coming down a little bit. Again, we have a ton of stockpiles. And, I mean, what else can you say, right? You have lessening demand in China going on. They were dealing with some things with deflation. They kind of bounced back. And now it seems like they're contracting a bit. If that happens in China, you also run the risk you know, not only these kind of lower prices here in, in energy, um, but also designer brands, right? Uh, they're a major, major consumer of designer brands there. Now, this could be bullish for gold in a sense, where people still buy gold no matter what economic issues going on in China. And that is a, a strengthening zeitgeist even among younger people. So you can see what happens even within deflation or in inflation, people are buying uh, gold there. Tesla up 0.87%. Steel Dynamics faltering a little bit down at 1.36%. Not as fun of a stock as it used to be to play because uh, it's just not really doing much except going down. Uh, the dollar trading in its lower area at 102.48, even with some of the weird uh, housing data with the, with the new starts. People are still expecting um, okay economics to the point that we will have an interest rate cut. You have the Qs up 0.17%, Google doing okay, Meta doing okay, Disney almost back up at 90. Then Lucid off 2.04%. You know, we could talk about Rivian as well. They're off a little bit. Um, now, I was able to profit from where I got in and got out. Um, and, you know, I, was, I still had a few shares, right? I was just kind of offloading when we went to pretty high highs recently. They're coming down a little bit. Um, they had a major sell-off today, off about 4.18%. And what's occurring with that, if I can pull it up, is that they are missing uh, parts. They're having to halt the development of... There we go. Of the, the Amazon delivery vans, right? Halt the production on it. So let's break into this a little bit. Obviously, that immediately sounds pretty bad. Um, Amazon has a massive holding. Uh, or excuse me, is a massive part of the revenue. That was like 19% of Rivian's revenue last year. Um, they have 100,000 electric uh, delivery vans to be deployed by 2030. These things look slick too. They're all in the areas that I hang out neighborhood-wise. Um, and they're very gorgeous, and they're designed really just for that, where you see some of the maybe Mercedes Sprinter vans are obviously great, um, but those are kind of general use vehicles where Rivian, what they're designing for Amazon is is very particular uh, for Amazon delivery drivers. Uh, Amazon also has a massive stake at 16%. So what happened is that they're temporarily suspending production of its commercial delivery vans used by retail giant Amazon uh, due to a shortage of parts. Shares of uh, Rivian were down 5%. Yeah, we're, where we're at. Production halt is the latest in a series of supply chain challenges for Rivian. Uh, so they didn't disclose any information about the specific part. 
they said that it's really not going to be a big deal and they're still going to be able to deliver what they intend to deliver uh, on time. So, you know, this has had kind of a pattern in recent time after hitting the all-time highs of just kind of going down. I, I do think that any kind of movement up in this stock, so, so they haven't, what's weird about this one is it hasn't responded to other players in that industry going up, right? Which is a little bit worrisome if you're a bag holder right now. You know, you're getting some days where Tesla would go up and Lucid would go up and by extent Rivian and everyone else would kind of be moving up as well because it was more of a sector play, right? Well, you've had, obviously, Tesla getting killed a little bit, but they're up right now. Lucid had been up. Uh, recently, they're down today. Um, and Rivian was still, you know, moving sideways. You had one day where you were up, um, but that was given back instantly. So it's a little hard to say right now. You know, if you're in it, obviously, you know, probably hold, right? I mean, that's what I would do, but I think it's a due diligence thing. But this is, this is going to be an earnings thing. So if their forward guidance is good and... They square everything away for profitability by Q4. I do think the stock probably has um, a nice way to go. I'm seeing more and more still. I know I've said that every time that I talk about it, but I continue to see more Rivians on the road. So they are producing and they are releasing and people are buying. And uh, I spoke to some guy the other day who had one. He was coming into one of the cafes that I spend time at. And, uh, you know, I asked him about it and he just he wouldn't stop talking about it. That's how much he liked the thing. Earnings next week, you know, you have Palo Alto, which is very interesting. Uh, let's pull that up real quick. I believe that's the ticker. Yeah, so off a little bit right now. Uh, a lot of people were seeing potential increase uh, for this stock, especially in light of the crowd strike failure. But what I think happens is that, I mean, you know, and you can see that's almost like an inverse chart in a way, right? at least around this area. I think Palo Alto will have like probably some good reports. I still think CrowdStrike is dominant, right? I mean, these guys are right at that initial access on the computer and nobody really wants to have to go and get a new suite of products and learn how to use it. It's just not how things uh, kind of work in that realm. Uh, folks, stay right there. We'll be right back.